Are you new to Falcon BMS? Want to set up your controls quickly but not sure where to start? Then you're in the right place. If you're new to the channel, I create tutorials and videos of online missions in Falcon BMS. Visit the channel if you're interested in more Falcon BMS missions and tutorials. If you are here specifically for a mouse and keyboard setup, I personally do not use mouse and keyboard, so with this information, do with it as you wish. So before we get started, I just want to introduce this form I have created on the Falcon BMS forums. It is a minimum buttons to assign. There's a couple on here. This one's as another uh, absolute bare minimum for Falcon BMS. But I have pictures and I have some of the buttons that you may need on your stick. Some are more important than others, especially if you have a stick and throttle that might not have as many buttons as you want it to do, want it to have. But go and check this out and it may help you with visualizing where the buttons are on the Viper thr throttle and stick. So if you're trying to set up buttons in the user interface in Falcon BMS in the controllers. You're doing it wrong. Do not set up your buttons in this interface. Okay, with all that out the way, let's go ahead and get started. So you installed BMS, go ahead and click on the launcher here. So when you click on the launcher, this is called the, this the BMS launcher. So it's default now. So if you want to go into your key mapping or your axis assign, go to axes, go to your role, so you assign something, you press assign. This is your role, so left wing down, right wing down. I'm gonna clear it here. So once you do once you see it, it'll say awaiting inputs. All you have to do is go to the right. And it will actually recognize right and left. After you do that, you go right and left, make sure it's correct. If it's reverse and you need to invert it, you can click on this button here. The dead zone is basically a null zone in the center of the control, of the center of the stick. So if you go to large, moving the stick back and forth and it doesn't pick it up. So you got to make sure you get out of that center point of the stick to get out of the dead zone. That's how you could adjust it here. Here's the throttle. If you only have one throttle, just use the top one. If you have two, there's the right and the left. The afterburner detent is the detent that the game will recognize you being an afterburner. So go ahead and set your, your throttle to where you want the afterburner to be, and you press afterburner detent. Once you click it and you go over that detent, it'll now turn green. If you want to set up an idle detent, it is the opposite. So you go back to where you want the idle detent to be for your your throttle to go into cutoff to shut off the engine. You go to that detent, you press idle detent, and now after that it'll be red and it'll tell you idle cutoff here. Be careful with this because you can literally go into idle and the idle cutoff will be just about idle and it'll shut off your engine on accident. I would recommend not setting up the idle detent, only the afterburner detent. So moving on to the tow brakes, you got the tow brake left and the tow brake right. For my specific setup, I have the SciTech Pro flight rudder pedals. I have to invert it. So you, once you get here, you, it'll say axes assign. You just choose your, your left toe brake here. Go back and forth. It'll assign it. And you have to invert it because it'll be backwards. You'll actually have to push on the pedals to release the brakes. After that, press save. Trim panel. If you don't have a trim panel, don't worry about it. Avionics. If you have a antenna elevation for the F-16, go ahead and map that. It's the same thing. I have to, with my Viper throttle quadrant system, I have to invert it. With the cursor X, cursor X is cursor left, so left and right. Cursor Y is up and down, so cursor aftward, this is down in a sense. And then cursor forward is up. I had to invert that as well. The range knob is on the top of the Viper throttle. I had to invert that, invert that as well to make it uh, make it correct. So if you're trying to assign your manual range or your antenna elevation, make sure that these knobs are not assigned a axes in your flight control avionics page. If they are assigned, then you will you will not be able to map them to a button. This tab is about ICP radios and your altimeters. So if you have any axes and knobs that'll control your COM1, COM2 threat and stuff, go ahead and set it here. In the view, I have the turn off your track IR forward. The other one is track IR FOV. So you don't want that to actually zoom in. So turn that off if you want your track IR just to, to simulate your head moving forward. FOV is if you have a slider on your Thrustmaster Warthog or your, your Viper throttle. You set this to FOV. This is basically to zooming in. And this is what I have for external mouse look, meaning that you could use your mouse to look on the outside. The natural head movement is right here. 
more realistic, realistic experience. When you look to your six o'clock, it'll actually kind of lean over your shoulder there. Flight model, if you want to have the knee boards, smart scaling, it tries to simulate what the human eye will see in Falcon BMS. So I have that all enabled. Over here to the left, there's two profiles. You have the F-16 by default and the F-15. If you have the F-15, I have a link below in the description. It'll probably pop up in the top right of a video that goes over this in great detail, especially if you're used to the F-16. So here, if you're wanting to change these controls, the QWERTY, you cannot change this. That's why it's green. If you do change it, it might mess up your, your install and it might do some crazy things. So I, I would recommend not changing this and try to figure out a way to, to map whatever you need to map that is not these buttons here. If you don't have enough buttons to set up everything on your HOTAS, you can add a shift layer and all you have to do is go into your key mapping, press, in, press shift, and it'll be this top one here. Now you can use your shift. Some people use the pinky switch and other people use the paddle switch. Use whichever one you want to use. So the F-16, that's default. Go to category. You can actually choose which category you want to go after, and it'll actually go to it in here. So let's go to the, the left console. So in the left console, go straight to the left console. Here are your options to set up your left console. Right here is the filter, which is actually just a search box. So you can actually just search your throttle. You put TQS, and it'll actually pull up your throttle quadrant system, all everything for your throttle quadrant. You can select your comm switch up, comm switch down, IFF out, IFF in. You can set up all of that in there. And then you can go in there and press stick, go into stick, and it'll actually have everything here as well. TMS up, TMS down, DMS switch, CMS switches, and all of that there. So some of the throttles, they have a two-position switch, but they both do not re register as a button. So to do that, you just click on whatever you want to open, And once you have this open, you go to the position that works, and you want that to be the position that it recognizes. So I'm going to go up on my switch. So I go up on the switch. This is now air refuel open. So it'll open the air refuel door when I go up on the switch. Once you do that, you press save. Once you need to register the other half of the switch, you go to the close position. I'll clear this. So I clear that. Press this button. It'll actually register a release of a certain button. In other words, be off. I'm going to press this button here. Now it's looking for a release. So press the button that turns on whatever you're turning on. To close the air refuel switch, it needs to release the open switch. So now it'll, it'll close it once I release the open. So if you have any questions about setting up your controls or Falcon BMS in general, please comment below. If you made it this far and would like to get notified of what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. And on that note, I'll leave you with some exciting footage of our player versus player aggressor match. Box three two five one twenty two twenty seven thousand defensive.